What's up everyone? Today is the start of something very exciting. We are doing a knee series for snowboarders. Uh, so essentially today is gonna be all about the anatomy of the knee. Uh, next time we'll talk about uh, potentially, uh, you know, the most common injuries for the knee. Um, and then after that, we can talk about some prehab, rehab uh, exercises you can do for those injuries. Before we get started, my name is Mark. I am a doctor of physical therapy and I'm one half of Mobility Duo with my wife, who is a licensed massage therapist, yoga instructor, etc. Uh, we are health professionals and athletes who love working with uh, athletes, primarily snowboard, ski, and weekend warrior athletes, uh, providing you with prehab, rehab, flexibility, strength tips, etc., etc. Uh, we work hard in these videos, so if you could subscribe, that would make us very, very happy. So let's dive right in. I don't want to go too in depth with the anatomy uh, because honestly I could talk for hours uh, because it is as complex as you want to make it. So I'll try to make this as superficial as possible, the most relevant for you. So as you may already know, the knee primarily does two major things. It extends, so if you stand up straight from a seated position, and it bends, it flexes, so if you're going into a squat position. But it also does a couple other things. It also externally rotates to the outside and internally rotates to the inside. In regards to the bones, um, there are three main or four main bones you have to worry about. You have the femur at the top, kind of your thigh bone. That connects to the bottom, the tibia, um, which has two kind of plateaus that it kind of forms in. You have the outside bone uh, below the knee, uh, the smaller bone, which is the fibula. And then uh, on the front, you have your kneecap, or also known as the patella, which sits inside of a tendon, uh, which connects to your uh, rec fem muscle. And I just want to clarify the difference between a ligament versus a tendon. So ligament generally is bone on bone, so it connects uh, two bones. So for example, the ACL, anterior cruciate ligament, it connects two bones together. A tendon is something like your Achilles tendon, so it attaches a muscle to some sort of fibrous connective tissue, then that, that, then that attaches to a bone. So tendon, muscle, and then bone, and then ligament is bone on bone. So in regards to the muscles, there are a bunch of muscles that we're talking about here. I will list them on the screen here. I don't wanna go over all of them. Uh, these muscles generally cross the knee joint and they're, they're all important. There's no one that's more important than the other. The ones that you'll most commonly kind of learn and hear about are on the front, you have your quads. So those are the muscles that extend the leg. In the back, you have your hamstrings. Those are the muscles that bend the knee. Um, and then some other important ones are like your gastrocnemius, your calf muscles, um, things like that. So in regards to inside of that knee joint, I'll start with the meniscus. So you commonly hear about the meniscus. Oh, I have a meniscus tear. I have meniscus degeneration. Very common. Uh, these are powerful words. Um, but what are the meniscus? The menisci, or I guess you'd call the menisci, are uh, two pieces of tissue that kind of form the inside of the tibia um, to allow that femur to kind of sit snugly inside. So um, the most important things probably to know about the menisci are the outside of it usually have the best blood flow. So if you tear something on the outside, it has a better opportunity of healing. Um, and the one closest to the other side of your leg, the closest to the inside of your leg, we call that the medial meniscus. It's, it's by far the most commonly injured meniscus. Um, and some other things important to note that you have a few muscles that actually attach to the meniscus to stabilize it. And another thing to note, uh, probably the most important factor is the menisci um, reduce those compressive forces, um, you know, when you're walking, running, jumping, things like that, uh, especially when that femur is pushing down to that tibia. Um, a majority of that force is gonna come up through the inside uh, inside of the leg. All right, so let's move on to ligaments. Like I said, ligament is bone to bone attachment. So on the inside, you have your medial collateral ligament. So it's going to prevent the leg from bending out or in, I guess, like this. Um, on the other side, on the outside, you have your LCL or lateral collateral ligament. It's gonna prevent your leg from bending out. Um, inside you have your ACL, which I'm sure you've heard of, and your PCL, so your anterior posterior cruciate ligament. What exactly does the ACL do? So the ACL is probably 
most commonly known for preventing or uh, kind of stabilizing that extension. So when you are extending that leg, um, it's not allowing that, that tibia, if you kind of see your femur and your tibia, your tibia wants to slide forward. So the ACL is gonna prevent that tibia to slide forward like so. Your PCL or the posterior kind of sits in the back prevents that tibia, it's just the opposite essentially. It's, so it prevents that uh, tibia to slide back and then it aids in that uh, flexion uh, of that knee. So in regards to how the knee moves or how the tibia moves on the femur and vice versa, it's not as simple as saying, you bend your knee, you extend your knee. There's actually some small movements that are occurring inside that knee joint. So uh, the first example I'll give you is if you are in a seated position Let's say, let's say you're doing a seated leg extension on the machine. So as you extend that knee, let's say this is our knee joint, that tibia or the bone below the knee is actually sliding forward. It's rolling and sliding forward. At the same time, that tibia is also externally rotating about 10 degrees. So we call that the screw home mechanism, okay? If I'm coming back down, it's gonna be the exact opposite. That tibia is gonna slide back. That tibia is going to internally rotate 10 degrees. Let's say I'm doing a, a squat position. So now my feet are planted. My, my foot is no longer hanging off the, uh, the bench or the, the machine. So let's say I'm coming up from a squat position. So now it's kind of, uh, it's a different movement. So if my, f if my leg is extending up here, my tibia is actually moving backwards. We call that posterior translation. So you could say that that femur is actually kind of moving forward, that tibia is moving back. If I'm coming back down, that, that tibia is actually coming forward. So it's anteriorly translating. So it's a little bit, uh, it's kind of opposite movements depending on whether my feet are planted or my legs are dangling from the air. Okay, that's it. I won't dive into this anymore. That is kind of the superficial um, anatomy of the knee. Obviously there is a lot more to this, but I just wanted uh, you guys to have a kind of a base understanding of how the knee works, uh, the muscles around it, the ligaments, the tendons, um, how the bones move when you're flexing or extending. Um, just so you know, when we dive into these, these next couple weeks in regards to injuries, um, you have a reference to kind of go back to and understand what exactly is going on, um, just because it gives you a better understanding. So um, let us know in the comment box if there's anything that's too confusing, uh, any questions, things like that. I love to hear it. Otherwise, uh, we'll be back next week. We'll dive into some of the most common knee injuries. Uh, just to give you uh, kind of better knowledge so you can attack this season head on. Um, otherwise, we will see you next time.